Okay, Steve, let's see. We've got one minute to go. Uh, when my clock says 10, I'm going to start blab blabbing. All right. Okay, it says 10 o'clock. So Raiders of the Lost Coco, this is a slideshow of some of the things that I scanned in from a very ancient box that I found in the farthest corner of my basement when I was moving out of my uh, five-bedroom house into a one-bedroom apartment. So way in the back in the basement behind many, many layers of boxes, uh, a box in the very corner in the far back that had never been touched the whole 26 years we lived there. Probably hadn't been touched before that. Uh, so, uh, and I looked in there and I, I saw a bunch of old documents and I said, oh, this is probably more financial records from 20 years ago that we don't need. I'm going to throw this out. And I started opening up the box and it was all the stuff from uh, notes from uh, developments of my games and correspondence with Tandy and uh, computer disks and all kinds of cool stuff. So he, the, the first slide is this is the letter that started the whole thing off. Uh, so this is me, hat in hand, uh, hands in this position, uh, sending a letter off to Tandy saying, Dear Sirs, I am submitting an original arcade game for the color computer for evaluation. And then, then I have to give my bona fides, you know, it's like I am a senior programmer analyst in the San Francisco Bay Area, because you never have heard of my town, um, who also develops, or would like to develop, uh, color computer software. I am hoping and praying that you will find this game acceptable for your color computer product line. So I sent that off, and the next slide, uh, oh, right, this was an attachment to that letter. Let me, uh, I don't think you can read that. So this is a one-page summary of gameplay. And you notice I very pretentiously put uh, uh, copyright 1983 by Rick Adams. Yes, that'll do it. Um, so how, here's how to load and start the game, because I gave them a disk, not a cartridge. Uh, and so now you'll notice you know, you, all the stuff about the gameplay and the scoring and stuff you're probably already well familiar with. but uh, you notice some of the writing on it. Uh, shoot biters and spiders and bats before they bite you. And then I have written in, and fireballs. That's because the original game that I sent them didn't have, uh, it only had the spiders. It didn't have the fireballs at all. So later on, I added that. Uh, and then there's the scoring for the fireball. Uh, also notice that uh, 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 th it's true of this, and al it's also true of the documentation for the game that I sent them also, that you never have the word kill. Uh, we always avoided that. I can't remember exactly why that was. One, one thing was that uh, I showed this game off to uh, at my kid's school, and their teacher was like, oh, if you ever said the word kill, she got very excited and very unhappy. So I always say, you know, so that you will not be destroyed by the monsters or, you know, before they eat you or something like that. But just avoid the word kill. Um, so, and then here, here's a little chart I made of how much Temple of Rom sold the first fiscal year. So that was 1985. And you notice that the, uh, uh, it came out in November. And then there's this big spike where uh, they have to send you know, one or two copies to every Radio uh, Shack store in the world. And so that explains that. And then it tapers off. And then now we're starting to get, uh, September, we're starting to get toward Christmas buying time. So that's, that explains that. Uh, and you notice there's like uh, you know, 6,000 units a month that it was moving. Uh, at the end there, uh, and I made uh, $1.50 on everyone sold, so 
you can do the math. Uh, my, when I was developing Temple of Rome, my, my wife said, uh, you know, I'm really not liking this. You're spending too much time in that back room on that damn computer. And then when she got the first royalty check and looked at it and looked at all the zeros, she said, why don't you go back in the back room and <laughs> spend some time on that damn computer? Um, and I actually, OK, all you guys that bought Temple of Rome, you bought me a car. I bought a new car with that money. And that's the only new car I will ever be able to afford to buy, because that was that was that, that was the only time I had that much money all piled in one spot. What kind of car? Uh, it was a Nissan Maxima wagon. It was really fancy. Uh, it had like a, a, a what do you call it? A graphic equalizer on the sound system. <laughs> I mean, nowadays it's nothing compared to what you guys have now with the you know the navigation on the screen. You got the touch screen and all that stuff. Uh, I've just got this. I've got this Mazda right now. It's really nice, but, but my kids all have the, the fancy screen. They're like, Dad, you need to get a new car. You know, it's like, well, yeah, but we'll see about that. Um, so what, what do we have next? Okay, here is, uh, Dear Mr. Adams, thank you for submitting your program, Temple of Rom, to Radio Shack for evaluation. Thank you again for allowing us to look over your program. This is obviously boilerplate. Uh, and it got passed to Barry Thompson. So let's see, what's the date on this? Uh, May 27th, 1983. Okay. And then, ah, uh, yes, they're sending me the contract for me to sign. Okay. Temple of Rom, file R250. Ronald A. Williams, staff attorney. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then I signed it, sent it back, and then they sent this, you know, they sent the, you know, the, with my signature and their signature, so it's a done deal now. Okay, so here's some graph paper, obviously from when I was designing Temple of Ram, and there's the font that I used. I was, I was particularly fond of the T, it was very, uh, uh, it was very Lord of the Ringish. Where's the T? Yep, right there. See that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks like Elvish, doesn't it? Awesome. And the interesting thing is I look back and it's like, okay, uh, the original game that I sent them, uh, the cursor was not a little flailing man like you have now. It was just a square, uh, just like the uh, Atari adventure game, because it was largely inspired by that game. So the cursor was just a little square, and, the, and one of the first mods that uh, Radio Shack said they wanted was, we want that to be a little running man running around. So you can see where I was uh, uh, working on what that might look like, and then I finally uh, settled on that down there. And then, but also there's all these musical notes. You know, whole note, half note, fourth note, eighth note, sixteenth note, and then on graph paper trying to see what an icon for that would look like. I must have been thinking about working on a music program and trying to figure out what the graphics for that would, how you'd make that. Uh, I don't remember, I never did a music program, so that obviously was never anything more than just a twinkle in my, in my eye. But, uh, uh, but you know, and then you can see I'm working on what does the spider look like. Uh, somebody noticed that the spider is stolen from Doubleback which it is, uh, lock, stock, and barrel. The spider and the bat uh, were the, exactly the same spider and bat that were in double back. But that's because, you know, Dale and I were friends at the same company, and, you know, we borrowed stuff from, from each other all the time, and he was perfectly fine with that. It's like, what does a spider look like? Well, I made the best spider, so of course you're going to use that one too, so. And then here is another font that I was working on, and, oh, what is, it? no, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to go back to the, it's, oh, somehow I hit the wrong thing, 
Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, let's zoom in a bit so we can actually read it. Now this one's interesting. Uh, up at the top there's another font that's smaller. This is obviously, I, I think this is a font I was thinking of using for Temple of Ram for some secondary purpose, but it never happened. So this is just, you know, and then you can see I'm working on the fireball because they asked me for the fireball, so that wasn't done with the first version. So now it's like we want a, a second enemy. And uh, is there a fireball like this in any of Dale's games? Did I steal this one too? I don't know. I don't think I did. Huh? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so this must be original with me. So, uh, so they asked me for a, a second enemy, and I added the fireball. Uh, so there I am working on what that would look like. Uh, and then you can also see lots of labels and addresses from a machine language program, uh, which was Temple of Rom. So the only source that I have for Temple of Rom right now is from a disassembly. So all the label names were lost. Uh, so from this, I can deduce what a lot of the labels were, which was kind of nice for me. It's not that nice for anybody else. It doesn't really help anybody else. So, oh, look, there's the pinout of the, of the serial cable down there. Uh, I must have been working on a cable. Okay, so it's, it's interesting, all the little things that you see that I doodled on there. Uh, oh, you can see gained 191 bytes, exclamation mark. So the reason I have these here with addresses, I'm hunting for places to save some space because, you know, it's only in an 8K ROM and it's pretty easy to get a program larger than 8K. So once that happens, you have to sc scrunch it down. So let's see. Let's hit the right button this time. Okay, this is... So there's nine pieces of graph paper uh, on which I put the maze for Temple of Ram. This is sideways. I should have rotated it 90 degrees, but I didn't have enough time. Uh, so you can see where I put all the treasures and the monsters, and along the side you can see the numbers where I'm figuring out the coordinates to put in because all the line data for this got put into the uh, assembly language program as just a bunch of data statements, uh, a billion of them. And uh, so there's that. And then, so I've got n the original nine pieces of graph paper, which are, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, were, uh, so I, I, I actually have those now. So I actually have the, the, uh, the, the dusty box that I found all this stuff in is actually at my table. So I can pull out, you know, I, for Stevie, I pulled out the graph paper. I said, here, touch some history. So there's more graph paper. I think I'm not going to zoom in on it because you know, you know, you know this maze by heart because you've played Temple of Rom so long. Uh, these rooms uh, here, I had all kinds of grandiose ideas about what this game was going to have in it, and all of those ideas did not fit in 8K. So, uh, so that that didn't happen. Uh, this room here, I was going to have little cannons. Uh, on each of these little steps here that were shooting randomly. So when, you're, when you were r running around this room, there, you'd have all this stuff shooting at you. And then I think you remember there's one really large room that's like as big as the screen. Uh, I was going to have like a working Space Invaders game in there. Where, you know, dun, 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 dun. You know, you'd have to like weave in among all of that. Well, that didn't happen. That was a <laughs> great idea, but no. <laughs> That is not an 8K idea. Okay, let's see, anything else here? Yeah, that's the center one. Okay, so, oh, these, these three rooms here uh, were inspired by some grain elevators in uh, Petaluma, California. So there's a three towers. That, they were always having grain explosions there, and people were being killed. It was very exciting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they were being <laughs> they were being destroyed. <laughs> yeah, 
This, this shape right here is sort of roughly uh, uh, inspired by uh, a voltage regu regulator. Now, I look at that and it's like, well, that, I remember thinking that when I was designing it, but it's like, that doesn't look like any voltage regulator I ever saw. So I, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, what else do we have? Not much. Okay, so here is the original uh, user's manual that I sent to Tandy. And uh, so I thought that they were going to reproduce this verbatim. This turned out not to be the case, as you probably know. Uh, you can, uh, it's kind of interesting. You can see it's on tractor feed paper. It's on, uh, well, they used to call it gray bar, but this is kind of blue bar paper, uh, done with a daisy wheel printer. I obviously printed this up at work. Uh, so now the really fun part is uh, the introduction. Get out of there. Let's see. Plus. OK, so it had a fantasy theme. Centuries ago, the rightful occupants of the Temple of Rom were displaced by a conquering army sent by an evil empire. The rooms of the ancient temple were used to store the empire's ill-gotten treasure and infested with many dangerous creatures who were charged with the task of guarding these treasures from any intruders, and so on. And you're, you're, a, you're a, a mercenary being hired by these people. They're going to retake the temple, and uh, so, so when, uh, so I sent that off to Tandy, and I looked in all the stores for, you know, who's got Temple of Ram? I want to see the actual thing. So I was just, I just made a nuisance of myself going down to all the radio shacks in town, uh, asking if they had it. And so I finally got a copy, and I opened up the, the user's manual, and it says, you are a space in, you know, explorer, you know, on the planet Rolock. Like Rolock. Oh, it's color spelled backwards. I get it. Um, and I'm like, a space explorer. You know, we have sensors have shown a maze like structure on the planet. You know, we have sent explorers and none have come back, but you know, you're you're next. Thanks. Um, uh, and I'm like, where did this come from? But I guess, you know, you gotta make it into a space game. So it's like, in space. So Let's see, so let's go. Ah, uh, yes. And the, uh, the Chronicles of Camber, Ch Catherine, Catherine Kurtz, fantasy novels, uh, heavily inspired this game, which is where the whole idea of transfer portals came from. And that's actually a, they're called transfer portals in this series of, bo of fantasy books by Catherine Kurtz. So, uh, you know. There's five places uh, where a circle is on the floor with a glowing crystal gem of unknown composition. What possible purpose these five inscribed circles could have, they could not discover. They thought to remove the gems, but found that they could not. And after numerous attempts to do so, simply left them alone. But you know them to be transfer portals, a means by which the original occupants of the temple were able to travel great distances instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Well, they cut all that out. <laughs> and there was actually um, uh, there was uh, playing hints in here that uh, that they left off also, uh, which were uh, if the bat is chasing you, you get double points for anything you pick up while the bat's chasing you, and so, and you can tell because as it's chasing you, uh, if you pick up a treasure, you know how you pick up the treasure and you and it goes blink to tell you that you picked it up. Well, it'll go blink blink which means, yeah, I just ran the, the scoring thing twice, so you get double points for that. Um, and then in the hints for the game, it said, uh, so it'd be a good idea to, you know, when you see the bat coming at you, uh, duck into a transfer portal, and you're going to be far away instantaneously, which means the bat is far away, so it's got a long time to reach you, so you can be racking up points that whole time. <laughs> They changed the name of some of the treasures, I think, yeah. Uh,
Yes, the, uh, uh, all of the verbiage of watch out for the monsters all had uh, uh, bats. It will chase you relentlessly until either you or it are destroyed. Not killed, destroyed. Uh, fireballs. If one engulfs you, you are cooked. Not killed, cooked. <laughs> Use the laser to disrupt, not kill, fireballs. I don't know if I did that because of that teacher's reaction. She was so sensitive about it. Or if Dale had warned me that they don't like the word kill at Tandy. Or, you know, uh, it's probably just because of the teacher's reaction, I think. Okay, here is an interesting piece of graph paper with, stop that. It's like, here is a font that is obviously a computerish font. I'll bet you I was thinking of this font for Omnistar. Uh, because it certainly wasn't, you know, a computer font is not, you know, for, for a fantasy game like Temple of Rom, I didn't want this kind of font. Uh, oh, and then you can see, uh, uh, guess what game I was probably playing while I was working on this? One hit on Wizard. Two hits. <laughs> Obviously, I was playing Dungeons of Dagoras. Okay. So here are some notes from Omnistar. Omnistar is a game, you know, there was uh, Temple of Rom, uh, which was my own original game. There was Shanghai, which Activision called me up at Tandy's uh, suggestion and asked me to do, uh, there was Bomb Threat, which was a perfectly valid, wonderful game, but for various obscure reasons, Tandy, you know, I sent it to Tandy and they didn't, they didn't buy it. Uh, and then Omnistar was gonna be my next game and I only had that in a very simple sort of proof of concept stage and that game was lost completely. Uh, but, I have, but I found in here the notes for what I thought I was gonna do with it. So uh, there's all kinds of, you know, here's like, I, I, just running through ideas of what sorts of things might happen in the game. And here's a diagram of what I wanted. I wanted to be multiple windows with, with multiple things going by in the windows all simultaneously and looking very high tech. Uh, so, and then we have four windows up here which I have labeled fluff, <laughs> which obviously is like, it's supposed to look good. It's supposed to look cool, you know. It may not do anything useful for you, but it'll look really cool. And that's, that was my idea of what those four windows were going to be. Then system traffic here, command line goes here, uh, inventory list goes here, because it's sort of an adventure type game. Uh, personal status, uh, so let's see what else we got. Well, nothing useful. Uh, there's uh, working out the coordinates of a, uh, what do you call it, five-sided figure. Um, be because the, the system map for Omnistar, if you've ever seen it, is basically just a dodecahedron, flattened. Uh, so all kinds of notes, not very all that, that interesting, I think. Uh, I'll zoom in anyway, though. Stop that. I hate that thing that drops down. Yeah. Acquire, so it's like, what kind of verbs are you going to do? You know, double energy, lose energy, gain energy. There's all kinds of ideas that I'm just floating around <coughs> trying, trying to figure out. And, you know, each node has three ports. What I was going to do with that, I have no idea. Red, orange, yellow, green, what colors to show. I don't, you know, I guess the color set, maybe. Uh, Here's some more ideas for a font for it. Anything in there? Yeah. Yeah, trying to do some, like some VGA line graphics there. All kinds of ideas. Uh, some data structures and ideas for how to draw uh, line graphics 
in a way that was really compact. <coughs> so I was going to do like an ASCII, you know, U5 would mean, uh, you know, uh, oh, let's see, it would be, U would be uh, lift pen, uh, pen up. It would be like a line plotter, you know, like pen up and then 5E, go 5 to the east, da pen down, go up, west, west, south, south, east, east, you know. Uh, so we're, we're drawing a little square. Uh, so I never did anything with that, obviously. And then all kinds of ideas of what graphics might look like. Uh, this display up here with the zero, zero, zero and the concentric circles and stuff, I got from uh, watching an episode of Mighty Orbots on TV and all kinds of little different ideas. Here was going to be the command loop. So let's see, what is this? Oh, uh, is this the last slide? I think it is. Oh my goodness. I. Uh, 1025, 20 min 25 minute uh, talk, huh? that's great. Uh, this, well, I don't want to tell you what this is. This is, was going to be the schedule for, uh, and the payout for The Last Ninja. And I, for The Last Ninja, I think I have a contract, and I think I have this schedule, and that's all I have. Uh, nothing about the program itself. <coughs> Steve's got all that. Steve can have all that. <laughs> uh, so let's. So we have contact uh, contract execution, uh, one thousand dollars. That's all I saw, and I'm I'm happy for that. So let's see. So there's uh, two nineteen eighty eight was when it got signed, and then I thought it was going to be done at seven eight eighty eight. So well that. Did not happen, so. Okay, well, that is the end of my slides. So if anybody has any questions, uh, otherwise it could be a real short talk. I have a question here. Yeah. My old eyes don't see all that well. Okay. Uh, could you put this up on the on a website someplace? I certainly could. And I've had like the uh, somebody that, that does some work for Cocopedia has asked me for this stuff. So I'm going to give that to him, so that'll go on his website. But yes, okay, uh, I actually have posted a lot of this on uh, Facebook, but I'll, I'll, I'll find a repository for it and, and publicize that. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so somebody hook him up. But yeah, I should I should put this in a repository somewhere where people can 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 look at that, because yeah, no, you're right. That's that's pretty hard to read, even zoomed in. Sadly, no. I don't have after OmniStar, and I'm a little disappointed with OmniStar because I saw from this and from some, some <coughs> other uh, pages on OmniStar that weren't included, that I didn't scan in, uh, my ideas for OmniStar were, were much more grandiose than what I actually did. Uh, I, I did OmniStar basically from memory. It was like, I remember these ideas. I didn't have any of these documents. Um, uh, so it isn't as great a game as I thought it was going to be. Of course, Temple of Rom wasn't as great a game as I thought it was going to be either, but it you know, did okay. Uh, thank you for the car. I mean, I, why should I complain? Uh, oh, the car had a, it talked. It said, right door is open. Left door is open. <coughs> Fuel level is low. <laughs> so while I was driving down the highway, my kids liked to like take the jar door and then close it. <laughs> Left door is open. Cut that out. Don't, don't make me pull over. Um, so anyway, returning to uh, his question, uh, I don't really have any ideas for any games at this point. I've done all the games that were in my head back in the day. So if I get an inspiration for a new game now, 
uh, I'll move on that. But so far, that really hasn't happened. Uh, my life, as some of you know, has been uh, re very eventful uh, lately, and uh, now it's back to a lull. So there's not much going on right now. So, uh, so that could happen. But, but so far, I got, I've got nothing in my head. To see what? People could come to your table and see the papers, right? I have the, yeah, I have the actual box with the actual stuff in it at my table. Yeah. So you can touch the graph paper from which was born Temple of Ram. That's <laughs> what was that? That's history. That's history. Yeah, you're touching history there. Dungeons and Dragons? Tabletop game. Tabletop game. I never did. I don't think. I'm not really sure. I bought one of the like strategy guides or rule books or something like that related to that once just to read it to start getting ideas for things. But I don't think I ever played that. Uh, the only uh, game like that I, that I played uh, was uh, I had a friend uh, one of my color computer friends at work, we had like about five people at work that, had, that got color computers, and they're the ones that talked me into buying one, because I was going to buy an Atari ST before, before they got a hold of me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, close call, yeah. Um, what was that? Yeah, I don't know, because I don't have one. Um, anyway, back to... Um, so I had a friend uh, that had one of the mm -hmm. color computers, uh, Jim Issel, who actually wrote for Rainbow Magazine and did uh, software reviews for them, actually. Uh, and he had a friend, Ken Macklin, who was a, a semi-famous uh, cartoonist. Uh, he came out with a, a I think he did a, a, a comic book called Dr. Watchstop or something like that. So those two nerdy individuals uh, invented a tabletop game. Uh, called uh, San Francisco Underworld. And you were uh, role playing that you were a mob boss and uh, going around and hitting other mob bosses and robbing banks and running from the police. And, and so you had a number of people, uh, you have a bunch of people playing mob bosses, and then you have one person that would play the police. And then you had a, uh, a game master. And uh, so I played that, and I was atrocious at it. Comically, entertainingly terrible. They loved me. <laughs> they say, please come, play some more. We wish to humiliate you more. And uh, uh, so I, uh, I, I remember uh, I was gang leader number nine in the game. And uh, Gang number number seven, gang leader number seven, and gang leader number you know three or whatever, and then the police, and uh, so I would knock over a bank, and then after you knock over a bank, you gotta like plot your escape route, and I would always go to like the nearest freeway, and it's like you're an idiot, that's right where the police are, so I would always get caught, so each turn they would you know. They say, okay, here's what happened on this turn. So and so rot knocked over a bank. So and so established, you know, a, uh, a house of ill, ill repute. So and so did such and such. In other news, gang leader number nine, and everyone would burst out laughing, got <laughs> caught going down Highway 101, just as big as life. <laughs> so yeah, so no, I, so in, in short, no, I never played Dungeons and Dragons. But I should have, because I probably would have provided great entertainment. Curtis Boyle wants to know, did you and Kale ever consider a collaboration? Uh, no. We, it, it wasn't like we thought of it and thought it was a bad idea. It was that we never thought of it at all. Uh, we did, you know, uh, he would be working on a game, and he would be sharing with uh, him and Jim and I were in a carpool together. So we talked color computer, going to work and going back. You know, and our commute was like uh, 45 minutes. So that's a lot of color computer each day. 
and we would talk about here's what I'm doing on my games and here's these problems that I'm having and maybe you can help me and there was a, so there was a lot of that kind of collaboration uh, and I, we would play test his games and he would play test our games and you know and all that sort of stuff uh, and we'd you know steal our steal bats and and, and uh, spiders from each other and that sort of thing but uh, yeah game co collaboration no although we helped each other quite a lot you know on programming problems and how can I how can I uh, uh, you know scrunch down this code and have it not use up so much space uh, it's kind of interesting looking in the source to Shanghai uh, in the production version of Shanghai in the cartridge uh, there is code to check to see if the program is too large to fit on the ROM and if it, it and if it is it sounds an alarm and obviously that code will never get executed because the ROM is never going to grow on you but uh, it was just kind of interesting to see that in there and I'm like what is this going oh I remember what this is okay fine <sighs> you said you lost your code when somebody decompiled it? Oh, temp yeah, Temple yeah, of Rom. Uh, Will William Astle did a disassembly <laughs> of a Temple of Rom cartridge. Mm -hmm. And from that produced source that you could build the game from. And that's what I used uh, and modified quite a bit uh, to make Temple of Rom 2. So... And I, I took all, uh, like the maze, I expanded it by 45% and added two new monsters and then also developed an online uh, level builder for the game. It's, it's a bit nerdy to build a level, uh, but it can be done. Uh, you have to have some Photoshop knowledge. And actually, John Strong said he, he's working on a way to, to be able to do it without needing to use Photoshop. So let's hope that John Strong comes up with something. You should plug your uh, itch.io account so people can get your stuff. My, my, oh, uh, rickadams.itch.io uh, has all my games available for download for the low, low price of $15. Uh, and I, somewhere I had a, a box about this big full of bomb threat CDs and I can't find it. So <laughs> maybe it got thrown out when I moved. I don't know. Rickadams.itch.io? Yeah. Dot itch.io. Yep. And there's also uh, templeofrom.com. Because every time I hear rom com, I think romantic comedy, which Temple of Rom is not. It is a fantasy game. It is not a space game. Thank you very much. Thank you. Huh? It did always have lights. Yes, it had. Y you're right. There was a, that's true. Uh oh. There's What's a that? Hole. There's a hole in the bacteria. That is true. Yeah. But are they space spiders? Yeah, they they could have been yes. magic rays emanating from your wand. But. Uh, yeah, well, it's space like. Bats? Nope, space nope. Bats. That, that is an anachronism. Uh, it's a fantasy game with a laser in it. <coughs> so, yeah, that, that doesn't work. But, but moving on. The, the car still worked, so. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. You're too kind, too kind indeed. <laughs> that was a ad lib for uh, uh, D. Bruce Moore's uh, radio play that I got to, to play in as Dick Adams. I hate I hate the the name Dick for somewhat obvious reasons, but uh, okay. Well, uh, ten thirty eight. I'm I'm just burning up the airwaves here. You said you still have the car. Uh, no, no, I do not have the car. Uh, I got rid of that a long time ago. Uh, that what happened to that? I'm pretty sure I sold it. I, boy, it was so long ago, I don't really remember. I may have traded it in for another car. Somebody should try to find it. It's in storage now. Yeah. 
Well, my, uh, speaking of uh, somebody should try to find it, uh, the, the color computer that I used to, to do Shanghai, uh, uh, that was the same one, well, that was the one on which I did not make uh, uh, The Last Ninja. And uh, after The Last Ninja chewed me up and spit me out, uh, I decided, you know, this isn't fun anymore. So I got rid of all my color computer equipment and I gave it away to somebody that came and picked it up and promised it a good home. And it actually ended up in the hands of Chet Simpson. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> No, I, yeah, there's nothing in it that would identify it as, as mine. Was it Eric Frenchman that you had given it to? Yes, that is correct. And then he gave it to Chet. What was the serial number? I have no, <laughs> I have no idea. Yes, what's the serial number? That was the number, uh, that, that was the, are they still doing that line at the auction? Yes. Oh, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but you know, but it got given to to to, him, uh, to Chet Simpson, and it's like I had a thought of like, wouldn't it be nice to have that back again? And then I thought, no, because I Stone gave that yeah. to him, yeah. you know. So there's no take backs, yeah. you know. I, that would not be fair, and I and I don't encourage that idea. Nobody should lean on Chet. Uh, uh, to, to suggest that, or, or for any other reason, uh, you know, because uh, I gave it. Gave it, it's, it's, it belongs to Chet now. Did you sign it? No. There's nothing on it that says Rick Adams. Um, what mods might have, uh, I don't think I did any mods to it at all. Uh, I don't think so. There's no memory board in it or anything like that. Uh, yeah, no, there's nothing. It's just a, it's just a color computer, just like any other. Did it come 64K? Uh, I think so, because that was by by that time I had money, oh, some yeah. money. Oh, yeah, the color yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. So uh, and my hard disk, my 40 megabyte hard disk. <laughs> Woohoo! And. Uh, uh, that died. I think that went in the garbage. <laughs> the, uh, the, the original, the original Coco one that Temple of Rom was done on, uh, I think that went in the garbage because it died. Literally, just died. Well, you know that you you've heard the story that uh, it was dying anyway. Uh, it has a glitch where the power supply would fade out uh, after it had been on for a certain amount of time. And Temple of Ram was, was the source code. I could only afford, you know, Chiclet Key, Coco One, you know, and uh, uh, a tape recorder. That was it. So the source was on three 20-minute cassettes. So it's right now at the cassette, and all of a sudden you can see the video start to kind of fade. It's like, oh no, the power supply is going to go out. So I would like, you know, open up the, uh, the take the top off, and I take a can of Freon and go, you know, and cool down the power supply. And then it would stabilize to the point where it would write out the rest of it. And then one time I went to do that and the Freon was out. So I leaned over and I was like blowing on it with my breath, trying to keep it alive. And, uh, you know, seeing a little, the little black sparklies in my field of vision as, as I'm about to black out. And uh, finally I hear the tape relay go click, 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 and you hear that final click where it writes out the last block to tape. And then it went down. So safe and you know so after that I, I, I bought a new one because it's like I think soon after that it actually did totally die on me you didn't have that real like a big hole and put a giant fan on it <laughs> I didn't yeah you had that, that was yesterday. but then you had that temple of Ram money rolling in yeah yeah so then all of a sudden I was buying you know because everybody's like you know you've got cassette tapes are you kidding me Buy a floppy drive. I said, I don't have the money. It's worth it. Buy the floppy drive. I was like, no, no, I'm sorry. When, you, when I said I have no money, you know, uh, that means I have no money. And 
you know, and they're like, no, no, we just, just, you know, get your paycheck and just go out and buy it first thing. I'm like, which one of my three children do I not feed to, to afford this thing? So after, I, the, after those royalty checks came in, it's like, okay, two floppy drives yeah. loaded for bear. And everybody can see. Huh? And everybody can still get to eat. Yeah, everybody still gets to eat, yep. Yeah. Oh, boy, those were the days. I'm trying to think of, yeah, Dale and I and, and Jim, we uh, commuted together to work. Somehow, I don't know why, Dale got this ancient milk truck. The old milk truck, it was all faded, and, you know, the, the transmission sounded like it was going to go out at any moment, and it just made this horrible racket. And we're, uh, So we were commuting to work 45 minutes, going down Highway 101, you know, in a milk truck. You know, just because just it's cool, I guess. But we're shouting over the engine, and, and uh, we're talking about the latest rumors that uh, if you uh, convert uh, the, the letters of Bill Gates' name to numbers and add them up, it adds to 666. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, any normal person would have said, well, that's an interesting idea. When we get to work, let's grab a calculator and figure that out. Oh, no. Dale had to figure it out right now. So we're, you know... He's kind of like, you know, he signed each one of us a, you know, a, a place, you know, you, you, you be the hundredths place, and we're going to add this up. And then it's like, okay, let's, let's, let's try ASCII, let's try EBSIDIC. And it's like, no matter how you added it up, it didn't add up to 666. Well, what have you put in his middle name? What's his middle name anyway? Well, we didn't have iPhones back then where you could, you know, hey, Google, what's Bill Gates' middle name? To which Google would say, who wants to know? And, Uh, it was Editasm at first. Uh, then I switched to the Microworks uh, assembler, I think it was. <laughs> what? I'm a huge fan, and everybody says, what's that? Isn't that like the Microworks? Nope, I use it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I still have copies of it on uh, old disks, development disks for uh, various uh, things that I have, like, uh, you know, the Shanghai stuff. I have the... the uh, Oh, by the way, another link I should tell you about. Well, uh, it's, don't write this down. Uh, if you want to know this URL, go to my table and on the menu on my kiosk of you know, playing my, my, four, my four games, uh, there's the URL. But it's uh, the git, git, github.com slash yggdrasilradio, which is the name of my radio station that I ran, run out of my apartment. Um, that plays J-pop 24-7. Uh, but uh, that's impossible to spell, and I'm not going to spell it for you. you. Just go to my table and look at it and write it down. But it, the Git, my GitHub has uh, the source to uh, Shanghai, uh, among other games. It has, I believe it has the source to the original Temple of Rom, uh, not Temple of Rom 2. Uh, but the, what's interesting about the source for Shanghai is that I have... In, in Git, you can have different branches of the source, different versions of it. And uh, I have like four or five versions that are, uh, I found uh, disks of Shanghai in various stages of development. So here's what the game looked like at this date. Then I worked on it some more. And now here's the version of it on this date. And then, you know, so you can see, you know, if you care to look into it, uh, you know, what changed in between the, all the various versions. Like I know the first versions don't have anything involving winning the game. Uh, it doesn't have the animated dragon at the end. Uh, uh, it does have the source for uh, the disks where I was compressing down the data so I could take the dragon and make it so it would actually fit in the ROM. Uh, and so there's a lot of stuff in there that like even I don't understand. Uh, so, uh, so if you're into looking at so old source code, that, that's something you might want to check out. Oh, yeah. That's the kind of tool I would get as well. Okay, well, <laughs> come to my table and read the uh, incomprehensible URL and write it down, and, and you'll be set. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, anything else? I'm, I'm not looking at the time. I'm looking at, I just got a text. Uh, that's the trouble with having a smartwatch because you're always doing this. And this is the inter international symbol for I'm bored with you. But that's not the message I, that I'd want to send. <laughs> now see, if I had discipline, my watch would buzz on my wrist and I would simply ignore it. But I don't have any discipline. Okay, that was fun. Thank you. <laughs> Whew, I made it. <laughs>